talking about scrolls and scroll design, what makes up a good scroll, and a few rules, do's and don'ts when you are busy designing scrolls. Um, the importance of scroll design cannot be understated. Uh, we all want to learn to engrave, that's why we're watching these videos, um, but there's a problem. You cannot uh, break apart engraving skills and designing skills. The both work, both of them work together. You need the one to accompany the other. Even if you are uh, an expert engraver if you, and, you, and you've got perfect graver control without proper design skills, your work will never stand out from the crowd as being special or different or one of a kind. Uh, you need to learn your design uh, skills as well. If you do not do this, where are you going to get your designs from? What will make your work stand out? Or are you just going to keep copying other people's designs, which might not work for most of the cases? where you need to put scroll design, let's say on a gun or a knife bolster, uh, you need to be able to draw your designs to fit a particular space. And there's a few simple rules that we'll be covering and uh, this will improve your work tremendously. And as with any other skill, please practice as much as you can. Uh, this will only improve your work tremendously. So let's go ahead and do some designing. Ornamental scroll design can be broken up into some very basic shapes. This is true for, I would say, 99% of all scroll design. doesn't matter how complex the design might seem. Uh, if you look at the design and you break it down into its components, you will always see these simple basic shapes. One is a curve, which might vary in uh, gradient or, or curvature. Uh, the spiral, which is basically just an extension of, of a curve anyway, and an S-shape of various uh, varying degrees and, and, and nuances, but you will always see an S-shape somewhere, and an arch. So take any scroll design that you see anywhere, break them up in their components, and you will see, when you look out for them, you will see these basic four shapes. This is the basis on which all scrolls are built. This will make it easier for you to design once you know what to look out for. And let's move on. The next part is uh, the basis of any scroll. The starting point of any scroll design is your spiral. What you do not want is a spiral with flat spots and elbows all over the place. What you do want is a, a spiral like this that starts from the center, spirals outwards, a nice smooth even curve. What you want is uh, your distance between your lines can gradually increase as you reach the outer limits of your spiral. Next thing is your spiral does not necessarily have to be a, a, a spiral like this where it's, where it's very tight you may actually in this case uh, have a more of a loose spiral that is, moves out a, at, a, at a softer angle as you go to the outer edges so both of these are correct you can do them both there's no problem with that um, just keep in mind if you start using this type of spiral that you need to repeat it in your design so that it all flows together. Flow is very important when you're talking about scroll design, as we will see a bit later. Um, another thing to keep in mind when you do design scrolls to fit into a specific space or area is you want the outer edges of your spirals to touch the outer edges of your design space, like here. And as well, they need to touch each other as well as you can see here and here keep this in mind um, what you do not want is the the backbone of your scroll design 
to hide behind a frame or overlap on a frame. You want it to touch the edges. This is a very simple design principle but very effective. There's a few don'ts that you do not want to do and that, that we can see here. Uh, an S-shaped spiral scroll. This does not work out very well. Do uh, avoid this at all costs. Another thing to do is uh, avoid this a case like this where you've got your flow going in one direction and then starting a, a, another scroll in the opposite direction this does not work as well uh, this is very a very bad design principle another thing to avoid is uh, having a small starter scroll and then having larger scrolls growing from it this is quite unnatural even in nature um, all scroll designs are loosely based on vine, vines growing or ferns growing. You will always have the larger leaves or the larger starting point at the base and then as you progress your, your spirals will get smaller. Another thing you can add to your repertoire is uh, basic leaf shapes these are just a few examples um, and with your leaf shapes that you add to your scroll design uh, you need to keep a few things in mind and this is the following when you draw in a leaf element like here if you draw your element towards its base its starting point it should be parallel to the edges. Of course we're not going to draw that line in completely. Uh, the same thing you can see all over here. It will draw the eye towards the base of your leaf shape. So even in a case like this, if you draw that line towards the base, it will be parallel to the outer lines of your leaf shape or design. So Go and study some other engravers designs to see different leaf shapes and how they went about drawing their leaf shapes. Uh, this can add a lot of interest in your uh, engraving, engraving and scroll design. Um, if you look at this, uh, you'll see that uh, this is just a few simple uh, scroll designs or, or, or leaf designs that can be done and you can do your own variations on these experiment a bit see what works for you let's go ahead now and add some leaves to a pre-drawn uh, spiral design that I did let's see over here so it's it's of course okay to turn your paper if you need to your your design area you can move it around as you need to when you're drawing you don't need to keep the paper stationary in one uh, spot uh, to make life easier for you turn the paper as needed so let's start off with the basic leaf element I'm over exaggerating the size of the leaf here so it's okay let's make that a bit smaller there we go another thing to remember is when you draw don't draw your lines too prominent draw soft lines that you can erase easily to make adjustments as needed see that flow line if I draw that in here it goes towards the base of your leaf this is called a finial that is the end part of a scroll finial your finial would be here here there and there. 
keep in mind that when you to incorporate your leaf shapes into your scroll to make them work with the flow of your scroll this line here mustn't be drawn right towards the base stop it uh, some distance away from your backbone of your scroll and keep with your next leaf element keep that same distance approximately the same to add some more interest with the, with the same basic leaf shape is to add leaf fold overs. Now leaf fold overs can uh, give you a lot of dynamic in your scroll design. So let's do that. Basically just another S shape as we saw like we saw in the previous part of the video. You can also add a leaf fold over in this area if you want. So let's take that idea with the leaf fold overs and apply, apply this to one basic leaf design and see what we can do with one basic leaf design to add interest to our design skills. There's nothing wrong with using a leaf the way it is as shown here but let's do some variation on this to see what we can come up with we can add a leaf fold over in this area by adding another S shape we can add a leaf fold over over here adding an S shape there and as we saw previously you can add a leaf fold over in here in this area so now just by adding some fold overs by using the exact same leaf shape we've created four new leaf shapes what we can also do is without overdoing it we can use more fold overs to add even more interest to a leaf. So if we add a fold over on this design, we've created a more dynamic leaf with even more movement in it. We can do the same thing over here. Let's add a leaf element in this area. So We've just created six different leaf elements by using the same basic leaf shape. I hope you enjoyed this. Please go practice as much as you can. Draw your scroll backbones, your spirals. Make sure that you keep in mind the simple basic rules of scroll design and keep practicing. You'll just improve your work tremendously this way. Have fun.